The only thing if he ran away would be if he, if he was afraid for his life or something. We can't figure out where he went to. There's no indication that he just ran away either. Zeb Quint left work on January 2nd and never returned. Zeb Wayne Quinn was an American teenager born on May 12, 1981, and at the time he was an 18-year-old working at a nearby Walmart. Zeb Quinn disappeared after work at Walmart on January 2nd of 2000. No one knows who killed him, and it's a total mystery until they strangely found his car. Welcome to Crime Circuit. I'm D. Ellis. Condolences to the family. Y'all like, share, comment, subscribe. Let's dive into the case. At 9 p.m. on January 2nd, Zeb finished up his job at Walmart in Asheville. After work, he planned to check out a car with his friend, Robert Jason Owens. They left Walmart at 9, drove separately, and were seen at a gas station at 9.15. Later, Zeb signaled Robert to stop, saying that he needed to make an urgent call at a payphone. After the call, Zeb seemed anxious, accidentally bumped into Robert's car and said that he had to cancel their plans. Zeb then drove away and no one saw him after that. Robert had another car accident that night and went to the hospital. The next day, Zeb's mom reported him missing when he didn't come home. On January 4th, Walmart got a call from someone claiming to be Zeb, saying he was sick. However, the staff thought that his voice was unfamiliar and it wasn't Zeb. Later, Robert admitted to making the call, but said that he did it for Zeb. This mysterious situation raised concerns about Zeb's whereabouts, leaving everyone puzzled about what happened to him. During the investigation, the police talked to Misty Taylor, a lady that Zeb was interested in romantically. Zeb and Misty were getting close in the weeks before he went missing. Misty had a boyfriend named Wesley Smith who had threatened Zeb prior. Looking at phone records, they found Zeb's last call was to his aunt, whom he rarely contacted. His aunt denied making that call. She told police that on the night Zeb disappeared, she was having dinner with her friend Tamara Taylor, Misty's mom, at their place, with Misty and Wesley there too. They reported a break-in that night, though nothing was stolen. Things would be moved around. On January the 6th, Zeb's mom got a call from a former classmate who saw Zeb's car in a restaurant parking lot near the Asheville Hospital. The car had its headlights on, and someone had drawn lips and an exclamation mark on the windshield with lipstick. Inside was a live puppy, a hotel key card, and drink bottles that did not belong to Zeb. Zeb's mom thinks the puppy was put there on purpose by someone who knew she and Zeb's grandmother worked nearby. Later, a couple reported seeing Zeb's car being driven down downtown Asheville. The whole situation became even more confusing and mysterious. When a sketch of the driver would be made, the police noticed that she looked like Misty Taylor. On June of 2015, the police said they found fabric, leather, and another unknown hard things along with bags and mysterious substances on Robert Owens' property. They didn't say if the fragments were bones. According to police records, Jason's uncle Gene would meet with the detectives. He said that once he knew how Jason got rid of someone's remains, it might explain what happened to Zeb. Gene then told them about a project on Jason's property. The police searched Jason Owens' property because he was a person of interest in Quinn's disappearance and was in jail for killing a couple and their unborn child. On July 10th of 2017, the grand jury charged Robert Owens with first degree murder of Zeb Quinn. On July 25th of 2022, Owens admitted that his uncle Quinn, the night he disappeared, hired by Wesley Smith. According to Owens, Zeb was tricked into the Pisgah National Forest, thinking Misty Taylor wanted to meet him. When he got there, Owens' uncle was there and shot Zeb with a 22 caliber rifle, causing his demise. I got out first, went to the back of his truck. I got out of my truck and walked around back. To the back of your truck? To the back of Gene's truck. Um, and then Zeb got out of the car and walked inside the passenger side on Gene's truck. So Zeb comes around Toward you guys there? Yes. And then what? Well, when I asked, and when I asked Jean where Misty was at, he said she'd be there in a few minutes. And um, I guess Zeb was thinking too that she was down that trail, and he turned looking down the trail. And at that time, Jean reached in the back of a pickup truck, brought out a 22 rifle, and shot him in the back of the head. After this, investigators looked into Jason's uncle 
and questioned him regarding what happened in 2000 and Jason Owens' statement. What do you think happened to Zeb? To Zeb? Yeah. Honestly, don't know. What kind of rifles did you have? 22s, primarily. Shotgun, 22s. I like no 22s. I just want plinkers. I asked him, you know, you know, why would you so far away from the house? You know, and I, and as I remember, he had no plastered concrete up, you know. And then later he'd become a, a pile that he'd burn brush and so forth and you know, he'd just make it as a, a burn area. And then, of course, when they, all the things come across the news about the burning bodies, did da 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 you know, I thought about the burn pile. That's a big connection to make, huh? Huh? That's a... Well, it's, you know, it's... All the years I hadn't thought nothing about it, you know. And then see these full of the, the burn, burn, burn. And then the mom's place burned down the second day or so. You know, and, and the burn, burn thing, you know, it, it, it sort of focused back, you know, at the burn pile. I mean, Jason loved to burn. I mean, he burned it, you know. He was always burning something. The next day, investigators searched the Bent Creek area where Jason claims the murder took place. They found 17 different 22 caliber shells. Meanwhile, Gene denied being any part around it, stating that if Jason accused him, it was all a lie. One in particular, a woman who, who told us that she left this area because Gene threatened to kill her. Um, I met Gene. Uh, I think 1999, he fixed my car, and we started a relationship not long after that. So he was my boyfriend. This case took a new turn when investigators questioned Jason's uncle's girlfriend about their relationship during Zeb Quinn's disappearance. They asked if they were still together and observed if there were any, any changes between Jean and Jason, such as becoming closer or remaining distant from each other. What she said? confirmed Jason's uncle's involvement. Um, Gene was spending a lot of time talking to Jason about things, but he said it was to try and figure out how to help him. What do you think he meant by that? Well, Gene had always said that um, you can't get DNA evidence from crocodile poop. <laughs> Meaning you can get rid of a body and no one will find it. Owens confessed to assisting his uncle in getting rid of Quinn's body after the murder. Robert Jason Owens remained silent in the courtroom as he heard his additional charges being placed against him. You have been indicted with two counts of robbery with a dangerous weapon. These are Class D felonies. You have also been indicted with the offenses of dismembering human remains. What would you like to do by the attorney, sir? Court, Court told District Attorney Todd Williams that he planned to seek death penalty for the marked murders of Christine and JT Cott along with their unborn child. Owens sat with his lawyers and the DA explained special circumstances that thought made this case eligible for capital punishment. Things like multiple victims and an armed robbery charge. Robert Jason Owens didn't react at all and left the courtroom with his head down. The case got even more suspicious when Adam Wright claimed he knew Gene Owens and even saw Zeb disappear. Gene Owens admitted that he knew Adam Wright. Adam told Jason that he was the one who introduced Wesley Smith to Gene. So in a way, Adam considered himself the middleman. In simple terms, Adam informed Jason about introducing Wesley to Gene. Gene somehow knew that Zeb had feelings for Misty, Wesley's girlfriend at the time. Gene then approached Jason to convince Zeb to go to the woods that night. This is the young man that was taken from his family, friends, and community and the world. This is the young man that would never have seen his end coming. This is the young man that trusted Jason to be his friend. On April 24th of 2017, the district attorney declared that Jason Owens would no longer be subjected to the death penalty for the murders of the Cods and their unborn child. They offered him a plea deal. The charges against Gene, Robert, Jason's uncle, could not be pursued further because he passed away. Owens agreed to the plea deal presented to him and was charged as an accessory after the fact to first degree murder. 
Robert Jason Owens sat there, agreed to a plea deal, which has, again, not yet been finalized, and then sat emotionless as the assistant district attorney read out some of the graphic details of these murders. And then, again, stone-faced, watching as the families of JT and Christy Codd got up to read statements about their loved ones. He would receive a sentence of 150 to 189 months for Quinn's murder to be served concurrently with the 65 to 70 year sentence he was given for the murders of that family and their unborn child. These pleas, signed, sworn, and entered in court today, deliver a punishment that is tantamount to a sentence of death in prison for Jason Owens. In homicides, there were three common motives, love and relationship, money, or revenge. One of those three. And love is usually the very first one, you know, most of the time. It's That's going to be it for this episode. Like I always tell y'all, watch who y'all hang with. Keep something with you and stay safe. I love y'all. Till next time. Peace.